I share what I eat with the internet on a daily basis and I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a health expert, and I don't even eat that healthy. So why do I do it? Why do I put myself out there, especially if I'm not giving nutritional advice? I'm Jackie. I have been OMAD intermittent fasting for over four years and I love to share the lifestyle. And I'm gonna give you my diet history and why I share with you guys, even as someone that doesn't have a perfect diet. I didn't plan to do this video, but it was something that came into my head this morning when I was taking a shower and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give the world answers because I get a lot of hate. And honestly, it doesn't really bother me. What bothers me is the thought of new fasters reading those comments and feeling like they don't deserve to fast if they don't have a perfect diet. So I'm gonna try to get through all of this without editing. My dog might screw that up a little bit, but I have notes on things that I wanna talk about, but I'm gonna try to get through this without edits because it is very, I don't want to say vulnerable, but um, it's just from the heart, sharing with you my backstory, why I love fasting, why I'm here, and why I share with the internet even when the internet can be an ugly place. So let's go. First of all, I started intermittent fasting in June of 2020 and I lost about 35 pounds. I have dieted so often in my adult life, mostly using Weight Watchers or calorie restriction. And whenever I did Weight Watchers or just simply counting calories, I would use like a calculator on my phone or I'd do diet bets where I'd bet on myself to lose money and I could lose weight every single time. I'd also pair it with some strenuous daily hard workout, but I'll tell you anytime that I did that, I was counting down the days till I hit my goal so that I could quit. I could never sustain that. And I know that some people don't understand that, but I don't make videos for those people to be honest. I make videos for the people that understand my background and where I came from. Anything that told me I couldn't eat certain foods was something I couldn't do long term. Or if I had to count calories, count carbs, do macros, honestly, I can't sustain that based on my personality and I don't find joy in it. It felt overwhelming and it literally would suck the joy out of any meal. If I wanted to try a new recipe, thinking of like, I don't remember exactly what the soup was, but making a creamy soup felt overwhelming to try a new recipe when I had to figure out what my serving size was, if I put these ingredients in, and then I'm not a recipe follower. I use a recipe as inspiration, but then I'm like, oh, that doesn't look like it has enough cream, so I'll add a little bit more, add a little bit more cheese. And then trying to figure out how to balance the joy of cooking, the joy of eating with figuring out how much I can eat and how much I shouldn't eat, it was honestly awful. I hated it. I could always do it in the short term. I'd hit my goal and then I'd say, screw it, it wasn't worth losing weight, I'd rather enjoy my life. And then I'd gain the weight back and it would start the cycle all over again. That happened after every pregnancy, it was a cycle that I literally couldn't avoid. And then when my son, my final child, well I, I had five years in between child two and three, so it happened several times in that time, in between those two children. And then after my son, it happened several times as well. I just would, gain and lose the same 20, 30, sometimes 40 pounds. And I honestly found so little joy in it. The weight of dieting was always on my shoulders, either saying, no, I'm gonna enjoy my life, don't diet, but feeling bad about it, or being in a diet and not enjoying food. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about growing up. I literally can't remember not enjoying food. And I share that because it's not something I just decided like, ooh, let's make this a person shaky. Um, let's make this a personality trait so that you can share it with the internet. That's not the case. I am telling you, I remember little kid going to grandma's house and being excited for Christmas because I knew that meant there would be um, one of my grandma's sour cream cookies out. Or I knew that we'd have a relish tray and cheese and crackers. All these different things that I associated with fun always had food. I loved my mom making homemade cauliflower soup. One of my favorite meals growing up was picking out my own Progresso can of soup. And I know that sounds probably pitiful, but I loved it. I loved that I could pick my own and I loved the soup. And I just have all of these memories. Um, canned tamales. We had this whole dinner built around canned tamales with rice on top of it and then refried beans with salsa and chips. And I remember being super excited about it. And that gives you a little insight. I didn't grow up 
with an almond mom, let's say, and I'm not saying anything against my parents, you know, they did the best that they could and almond moms really weren't a super big thing back then. But I'm just telling you, I grew up like going to Wendy's and we'd have, you know, you can get three things off the dollar menu. And that felt like a really heavy decision. Like, what three things can I prioritize? And it was exciting to me. And I remember going, My both my parents worked at a factory that was right by our house. And I remember once taking my parents, I don't remember which parent was working and which one I was with. Um, I feel like we were visiting my mom, but we picked up McDonald's and I swear to you, it felt like a huge deal. We didn't get to go out to eat a ton growing up. And every single time it was the biggest treat to me. My grandparents would pick me up from sports practice and my grandpa would have a McChicken and a McDouble for us. I worked at McDonald's and I would eat breakfast and lunch there because it was free for one of the meals and half off for the other. It was super convenient and I never got sick of it. I worked at an apple orchard and I would live off of Honeycrisp apples, their donuts and apple cider because we got them for free while we were working. I have so many memories rolled up around food. Now, I, again, am sharing this to just tell you, not that I'm sharing that as like, this is a perfect diet, I've been doing it my whole life, but to tell you, I don't remember not loving food. I don't remember it not being part of my memories. Another memory, playing sports, we'd stop at, say, Fazoli's on the way home from a volleyball game in Lansing. And I remember specifically, one, being very excited that we stopped there because going to Fazoli's felt like a big deal to me. Um, Olive Garden was like out of reach. <laughs> but Fazoli's, I was excited. And then I finished my meal and friends didn't finish their meal and I finished all of their meals. I did that. I remember another time at McDonald's and it was like everyone thought it was a game. But I'm not sharing that because I was like trying to impress people. I've always been a volume eater. So again, that's not something that I'm like, ooh, let's make this part of my character trait now that I'm on the internet. Absolutely not. I've always ate high volume when I eat meals. I don't know why. I remember going out with a group of friends to work. This is as an adult. And we went to a Mexican restaurant and every single person except for me got boxes to take half their food home. And I ate all my food. And I, I don't think any of them were trying to be like polite about it. Like, oh, I better not eat in front of these people. We were all like a good group of friends. And I had no problem finishing the same meal that all of them packed up half of. That is just to say, volume is how I've always ate. So when you are, have someone that's excited about food, I love celebration with food. I love making my kids favorite dinner or favorite dessert and eating it with them. Like that is joy to me. It literally brings me joy to share food with people that I love, whether I make it or not. It is something that I love. If you take that away or you, or I make myself feel like I can't have certain foods or I need to restrict them, I can't sustain that long term happily or I never have been able to. And to be honest with you, I don't want to change that. I don't want to take away that part of me. Like I literally have joy when I think of like um, recently Jimmy John's had a new pickle witch and it's fun for me to try new foods. It's fun for me to get in on promotions and try things. I really enjoy that. I don't want to like alter who I am, I guess, unless it's a natural thing where I'm like, yeah, that doesn't interest me. I have no problem leaving it behind, but to like make myself feel like I can't be that person that I'm very naturally doing, it's really hard and it weighs you down mentally. And then that's where the burnout comes in. So when I came to intermittent fasting in June of 2020, I legitimately thought it would be the next diet. I thought, I'll try this, I'll lose weight again. I had just gotten off a couple different rounds of diet bet that I won. So I was already down a little bit of weight, certainly not. I was still like well within uh, overweight. And I thought, well, this will be the next arm of it. And my friend, Gentry, um, she knew I was about to start fasting and she had found Fast Feast Repeat as a book. And she said, I think you'd really like this. I do like to read. I like um, having understanding of things. Um, for whatever reason, I had never considered reading about fasting or looking it up. I just thought I, I'll fast. But I read the book and it literally changed my life. So it got me to understand that fasting has benefits beyond just uh, like a calorie restriction. I got into fasting and I really learned that for me personally, 
I found it much easier to restrict when I eat instead of the what I eat. And I was able to find balance. I can be very disciplined in the fasting. I can go long times of fasting. And again, it, it took time to build up that fasting muscle. But for my personality and loving food and loving the joy of food, I loved that I could give up food at times where it wasn't important and still have that joy of eating almost every single day. There are days where I fast the entire day because, you know, for whatever circumstance, but it's all based on my planning. I can have the joy of eating every day without the burden of dieting, without feeling like I'm missing out. And I'm gonna tell you, I have never looked back. I am so grateful for the balance it's brought to my life. I still get the joy of eating and I still have a very disciplined routine of fasting. And if you think it's the lazy way out, I don't care, you can call it that, but it takes a lot of discipline to fast. It takes a lot of discipline to make it your routine. And yes, it does become routine, but you have to put yourself into the mindset and the routine to get there. I have found weight loss, I've sustained weight loss, I've gotten rid of the diet brain, which I like more than the weight loss, I have reversed my fatty liver disease that I was diagnosed with at 24 years old. And by the way, when I was diagnosed with it, I didn't, I wasn't overweight at the time. I have near perfect blood results. My blood has improved every single time I've have had it drawn since becoming an intermittent faster. And my eyesight has improved. I had a foot fungus on my toenails for over a decade that I couldn't get rid of. I started fasting, it went away and it's never come back. There are so many benefits that I've had to intermittent fasting. On top of weight loss, on top of constantly shedding the diet brain. And I want you to think, is that benefit in Jackie's life? Yes. Is that benefit even if she's not a healthy eater? Absolutely. I don't care if you tell me I could be doing better. I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with that. If you say Jackie, your diet could improve I would not argue with you. I don't share what I eat for you to think, Jackie thinks this is an optimum diet. No, I'm sharing with you a lifestyle. I'm sharing with you that I have found balance. I'm sharing with you that I have found success despite my love of food, right? And I wanna tell you something else. By not restricting what I eat, my diet has actually improved. And you might find that hard to believe, Yes, I still love carbs. Yes, I still love sugar. And this is not an apology. I'm not apologizing. I don't feel bad about it. But I want you to know, I don't eat the same quantities. I don't eat with the same, I, I'll never do it again, so I better indulge in it while I can. I, yes, yeah, still eat high volume. But in the past, if I was, say, having, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking of donuts. Donuts always pop in my head when I make these videos because donuts was always something I would exclude. Well, I'm never gonna eat donuts again, and we got this, I'm gonna eat all of them right now, no joke, because I'll never do it again. Well, we all know I would never stick with the never doing it again. That was part of the never ending cycle of burnout and then coming back to it. Well, I don't eat a pack of donuts anymore because it's never off limits. Yes, I still eat donuts. Yes, I like having dessert. Yes, it's almost on a daily basis that I have something sweet and absolutely on a daily basis that I eat carbs, but it's not an excess like it was before. I don't eat something with the same velocity of like, never gonna do it again, better make up for it while I can. That behavior is like over. The other thing is I still eat a wide variety of foods. However, if you offered to take me to McDonald's, even if it was free, I probably wouldn't go. It just doesn't sound good anymore. And I'm comparing that to Jackie that worked at McDonald's several times throughout high school and college and would eat there twice a day. Before fasting, if you offered me a Big Mac, it would sound amazing. It just doesn't sound good to me anymore. I, yes, love a Culver's burger, but a Culver's burger is better than a McDonald's burger in my opinion. And I just, my tastes are evolving. And guess what? If my tastes are evolving, Maybe I'm not ridding myself of every single bit of fast food, but that's easier to say no when it doesn't sound good than telling myself I'm never allowed to have McDonald's. Um, same with Taco Bell. My family has gotten Taco Bell several times in the last year, I'd say, and it isn't worth me getting it. I'm just like, no, I'll fast because it doesn't sound good to me. 
I don't get hot lattes anymore because I don't feel good while eating them, or excuse me, drinking them. I used to have hot lattes all the time. I'd make them at home, I'd get them when I ran errands, and that's basically like a hot milkshake. I don't get them because they're off limits, but they make my stomach hurt now, and because of that, they don't sound good to me ever. Um, Little Debbie process cakes. I used to love oatmeal cream pies, the Christmas cakes. And I remember a few years ago, I was like, it's in my eating window, I'm gonna have one. And I actually didn't like it, the Christmas um, Little Debbie cakes. I haven't ate one since. I don't get Little Debbies anymore. Is it because I'm too good for them? No. Is it because it's off limits as a rule? No. Is it because naturally my body's like, yeah, that just doesn't appeal to you anymore? Yes. I have made shifts. My diet has improved, whether you want to believe that or not. And I'm all right with a very slow progress over a perfect diet that will only last me for a month. I want sustainable life improvement, which fasting has brought me. I don't want to be perfect for a month and then burn out and be on that cycle forever. That's not good for me physically. That's not good for me mentally. And honestly, I don't want to share something that isn't actually gonna work with, for me long-term. When I started fasting, I bet you, if someone would've said, are you gonna share this online? I would've never in a million years thought that I'd share it. However, it changed my life so much, getting rid of the diet brain, how much I enjoyed fasting and finding a balance of joyful fast, joyful life, joyful eating window. I just honestly thought it was my duty to share it with others because of the freedom it gave me. And if you're sitting there going, how dare you eat carbs and sugar and like to eat mozzarella sticks still, or you eat burger and fries, you have a diet pop. Eh. If that is you, you are not the person I'm trying to reach. Like I, kudos to you. Do I wish I loved only eating healthy foods? Absolutely. That'd make it easy. If you can't understand why it's enjoyable to have those foods, we're not the same person and that's okay. I think of it this way. Like all of us are built differently, obviously. Some people have an extreme interest in things that I could not care less about. You wanna tell me about NASCAR racing? I literally try to figure out why that's interesting to people. But guess what? I'm mature enough to know I am not you. You are not me. We're built differently. Maybe food isn't a huge interest to you Maybe it's NASCAR racing, or maybe it's gardening. I can't understand why gardening is so fun for people. I have zero interest in planting, pruning, checking on something, watering it. No thank you. But is it great that there are people that are interested in that? Absolutely. Why would I tell someone that they're wrong for their interests if it's not the same as mine? I didn't decide to put my flag in love's food but that's who I am. And so you know what? I share it. I share my lifestyle with, as someone who really, really struggled with diets my entire adult life, and now someone who has found a great balance with fasting and health improvements, mind you, and still eating foods that I like. I am okay with a slow burn of progress. I am okay with it not being perfect. And here's another thought for you. If someone said to you, you better not save $10,000 because if it's not a million, you can't retire with it, don't do it. Wouldn't, wouldn't you kind of question their intellect? Wouldn't you think that makes no sense? Saving $10,000 is better than saving zero? Or what about someone that doesn't quite wanna run a marathon, which is me, by the way, what do you tell them? Well, don't walk 10,000 steps because you're not gonna run a marathon, so what's the point? No, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't tell someone that their progress isn't enough if it's not the same as someone that is an elite of the same thing, right? Why, why do I have to have a perfect diet to reap the benefits of fasting when other people, yes, have a better diet than me or a more nutri nutrient dense diet or they don't have as much processed junk in their diet and they fast? Why do I have to be the same level of elite to reap the benefits of fasting? Well, newsflash, I don't. And that's why I don't apologize. I have benefited from fasting. I am continuing to benefit from fasting, but in a way that fits me. If I tried to be a perfect dieter, if I tried to eliminate carbs 
and I tried to eliminate sugar and I didn't do the fun food experiments or trying different foods or doing promos or going out to eat, guess what? I would not be doing it long term. And I want to do this long term. So I'm going to do it in a way that's natural to me. I'm going to do it in a way that works for me, that I'm still seeking benefits from, and I'm still getting a lot out of it. I have the mental burden of dieting lifted. Uh, I have the mental burden of dieting that's been lifted for my life. I've had so many health benefits, and honestly, I love this lifestyle. That's why I share. I share it because I have found so much joy. I have found so much enjoyment from this lifestyle, a balance. I've had benefits. I continue to have benefits. And I'll let you in on a secret. My primary care physician knows that I eat one meal a day most days. She saw me when I was overweight. I came in five months later of when I was five months into fasting and she said, whatever you're doing, keep it up. She did my blood work. She said the same thing. You are doing great. I am seeing improvements. You no longer show signs of your fatty liver disease. I am not doing this alone. Yes, she doesn't come sit down and eat dinner with me, but she sees that I am better than I was pre-June 2020. And you know what? That's good enough for me. Do I share this to say, here's what I eat in a day. I want you to copy my diet. Absolutely not. Because guess what? I don't want to eat the same thing that you want to eat. I don't eat sea fish. Or <laughs> I don't eat seafood. I don't eat fish. I'm not trying to share with you that this is what you do to have a sustainable lifestyle as far as bite, 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 bite. No, I'm sharing with you Jackie, how Jackie eats, which fits her lifestyle, what's natural to her. I'm a volume eater. I like a variety of foods. I love to go out to eat. I like really saucy foods. I like really spice foods. I like variety. So I'll have Greek one day and Indian food the next day and then a Jimmy John sub the next. Like I'm showing you it fitting my lifestyle. I'm showing you me moving eating windows. I'm showing that I can still find balance of having the birthday party for my kids, participating with it, and then fasting before and afterwards. I'm showing you someone that has made fasting fit her life. I don't make my life fit into fasting, and that's what I wanna show people. I wanna show you how joyful it can be. I wanna show you that I have found balance and that honestly, I think it can give a lot of people balance. And guess what? It has given many people balance. Because I've shared with people, I get letters, I get emails, I get Instagram DMs, I get nice comments, and all of those are so worth any negativity that I get. And I'm not sharing this video for the people that are supportive. You guys are awesome and you know who you are. I'm sharing this for the, the people that are reading the negative comments and wondering if they can still continue fasting. Like, oh, should I actually do this if I'm not perfect? Well, guess what? If perfection's required, how long do you think you're gonna stick with something? Probably not very long. So this has been a long ramble. Let's say I'm at 23 minutes. Um, and I'm not apologizing. I don't feel bad. I'm not trying to give someone nutritious nutrition advice. I think I make it pretty clear. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. I have no medical experience. I am someone who struggled with diets. I'm someone who's hated dieting and loved food and the two, I couldn't find a way to make them coexist and be peaceful and joyful, but now I have. And that's why I share it because I want people to find the same freedom that I found and you can take it wherever you wanna take it. You can learn to fast and then become keto. You can learn to fast and count calories. You can learn to fast and cut out carbs. You can do a lot of things with it. I don't tell anyone that they can't do something. I am not someone that's gonna know how many grams of protein you need to get a day. I'm not someone that's gonna know your uh, base me metabolic rate to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. I have zero interest in coaching individuals because I feel like I don't have the knowledge for that and I know that about myself. I wanna encourage people that fasting can be a lifestyle that works for them the same as, as it's worked for me. I want people to see the joyful lifestyle that fasting has given me and I wanna be an encouragement and a friend. I wanna be your fasting foodie friend and that doesn't mean that I have to be perfect to be your friend, to be an encourager. And if perfection's required, we probably shouldn't be friends anyways. I'm gonna look at my notes and see if I've missed anything. Look at me, I think I hit all of these. I'm gonna tell you something, writing down notes is almost as good as reading them again because writing it down just makes a difference. So there's a little tip for you. But. I'm trying to think. I just feel like I haven't said enough. I'm only 24 minutes in. 
but I probably said enough. I love fasting. I love food. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I, almost four years in, am excited about something. I am looking forward to more routine exercise. <gasps> Jackie, you've never done that. I know I haven't. But it's something I'm actually looking forward to. I'm building upon the space that I've started. And the really cool thing is, I feel like fasting has done that for me. And I have a whole video coming out on it's the domino effect of fasting because it's improved my self-image and improved my like sense of self-worth. I continue to pursue a better me. And that's only because of the start of fasting and the benefits I've had. I just wanted to continue building upon that. And our home gym is like in disarray, but I'm super excited to have a more routine. I'm gonna share that with you guys. But it's only because of all of the um, discipline of fasting, the success that I've had, being a better me, all started with fasting and I'm continuing that. And again, that progress didn't require perfection. I'm not gonna do any sort of workout routine that requires perfection. I'm just making it more a, a daily part of my life. I like doing certain things like walking, stretching, the rebounder. I'm only adding things in that I enjoy because I like joy. Joy is joyful. Joy is easy to pick. And so I'm continuing and it has nothing to do with weight loss. I think that's gonna be a huge key to me sticking with it is I'm not doing it to lose weight. Anytime I've done a beach body workout or even when I tested 75 hard, that was after I had lost weight, but I had to do it every single day, two workouts a day. I'm not doing that this time. I'm making it part of my daily routine because I enjoy doing these things. I see benefits from it. And again, I'm choosing joy and I'm choosing a better Jackie and the two can coexist. And so I'm like excited that imperfectly fasting an imperfect diet has still led me to progress where I'm continuing to choose myself in other ways. That was the other part I wanted to share with you. This has been a very long video. There will be not a single edit on it. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much. And if you wanna see one of my earlier videos with fasting, one that got me started, you can check this out right here. Thank you so much for fasting. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao, Donna, ciao. Bye-bye.